Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And uh, crowd's a little smaller because I forgot to announce you all were going to be here. But I did send it out on one call now. So I hope you got that. And if you're not on one call now, see me after service and I'll make sure you get on that. It's just a way of, of sending out messages periodically. And uh, it's, it's a good opportunity for us to communicate with you and uh, share information. As we typically do when they're here with us, I'm just going to turn the entire service over to Rayuel and to Christine and the girls. And uh, you pray for them. And listen intently at every part of it, but especially concerning the work that's going on in the Philippines. Brian Palmer would come home and he'd be so excited about what God was doing over there. And the thing that would ring in my heart every time Brian would come home, he'd say, Larry, all you gotta do is just share the gospel. And, and they just come, they just, they're just waiting for it. And that's so much different than it is here in the United States. And uh, people that are hungry, need to be fed. And uh, this family is doing their very best to share the gospel. So it's my privilege to give to you tonight the entire Tika family. And uh, no offense, Ray, well, but when, when I told some that you were coming, their first question was, is the family with him? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so we're gonna turn it over to them and, and you prayerfully uh, enjoy yourselves tonight. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much, sir. Amen. Yeah, you know, I've, I've thought about that even before you thought about it. Because, uh, in, in fact, we were not supposed to be here this year uh, in the United States. Next year was our schedule, but then our home church in, in Richmond, Indiana, and that's our sec second home church. This will be our first home church right here, Lakeside, if you don't mind. <laughs> But um, uh, our home church in Indiana is celebrating their 50th anniversary in this month in June, and they asked us to to sing a concert in one of the nights that they have. They, they have a five night of revival, and so that's one of the main reasons why we're we're here. And we were kind of uh, uh, debating with my wife and myself if they will come because she didn't want to go uh, just because of financial reasons, and it, you know it takes a lot of money if you take four the four of you out here. But I said, you know what? People there will be looking for you and the girls. And it would, would not mean anything if I'm the only one there because they will always, always be looking for you. So I said, come over, we'll have faith that God will provide for all of our needs. And uh, so we're, we're here. And if you don't know the Tika family yet, or probably you forgot how we introduce ourselves, we would like to introduce ourselves again to you. We sing our introduction. You remember that? You, if you remember the song, come sing along. We are the Tika family. Roel. Christine. Debbie. We're missionaries to the Philippines. And we'd like to say hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. That's the Tika family song. <laughs> I'd like to sing a song uh, uh, to you tonight that, that's close to our hearts. <coughs> and that song is... Uh, that song is about... If I can find it. <laughs> it was here when Jason was here. Uh, 
they ask you? I played it when you were here. <laughs> and was it on the drive? Yeah, it's on either when on the drive. Keep casting your bread on the water, and that's an investment 
an investment that we all do in the kingdom of God. You know, the Tika family, you, you probably know this already, that it all started with my grandfather. I'm a third generation preacher in the Philippines. And I, I'd like to show you a picture in case I haven't showed, so showed this picture of my grandfather with you yet. This picture is a grand, uh, my picture of my grandfather and my grandmother, Heriberto and Claudia. They both got saved by reading a Gideon's Bible given to them by Gideon's missionaries back in the World War, Second World War. And they weren't supposed to read the Bible unless you're a priest. In the Catholic tradition, you're not supposed to do that. It's just this, this time that they have allowed people to read the Bible. But at that time, they were very strict because they know that if people read the Bible, they will know the truth and the truth will set them free. And what happened to my grandfather, my grandmother, was they both knew the truth and the Holy Spirit set them free. Both of them were disowned by their families just because of this newfound faith. But they never left that town called Tanai in Rizal. And Miss Margaret was there, has been there. And that town has been the birthplace of the first Baptist church of Tanai in the northern part of the Philippines. From their family were born five boys and three girls. My dad, Pio, you, you've probably met him before. He's the third in the boy. All these five uh, boys became pastors and three girls, one married a pastor. And all eight gave birth to 15 boys, including myself and my brother, who were all full-time in the ministry in the Philippines. I have got a nephew right now who has been a pastor, a church planter in Vietnam right now, a nephew. So we're talking of the fourth generation of the Tika now, of the, of the Tika family now, from my grandfather to my father, my uncles, my cousins, and down to the fourth generation. And I'd like to show you a, a picture of, of, uh, of that, of that, um, of that uh, family tree that we have. From Heriberto and Claudia were born eight children, and these eight had 15 boys, and my name is right there in the middle where the yellow marker is. My name, Ruel Nimrod, my brother, my sister, Miracle, and the fourth generation goes with to Debbie and Denise. And I always say this, that if they make the right decisions, they will marry preachers and pastors. I, I, I just wanted to make them, you know, e easy to, 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 to choose, who, you know, who God wants. Because, you know, if a boy wanted to date with them after, in the near future, probably 15, 20, 30 years. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and they just asked the boy, are you planning to be a pastor someday? And the boy said, no. So you scratch him off your list. You know, and if, and if a boy says yes, well, may the best pastor win, you know. But it's just a joke, you know, of course, we, we allow them to decide who's God's will for them. But then it's a good conditioning in their mind so that when they, they come to, to decide, at least they know what to decide, uh, to decide on. But we're so proud that our, our girls also are, are helping in the, in the ministry. And this is the, uh, this is the, uh, the church, the original church of the Tikas, Tanai First Baptist Church back in the early 1960s. And in 2009, you all know this already, that church was, was uh, uh, demolished because Ms. Mr. Mr. Brian and Miss Margaret helped us in, in building up this church again. And it's a vibrant church today by the grace of God. You know, Brother Brian ha has, has worked a lot, not only in Lakeside, but also in the Philippines. He's been there four times, I think, or five, I guess. I don't know how many that, yeah, five. And with, with everything that he has invested in ministry, he is right now, even right now, after his lifetime, gaining a profit of that investment. And that's what, what that song is about. Just keep investing, keep giving, and you know that even after your lifetime, your investments will go into building the kingdom of God on earth. People that you'd never meet in this life, you will meet in heaven. Brown-skinned, black-haired Filipinos like us coming up to you and saying, thank you for praying for us. Thank you for supporting us, for sacrificing your time, your money, your energy, because we are products of those prayers and support. A, a, a favorite song that Debbie and Denise would like to share with you is a song 
about uh, us giving of ourselves to people whenever there is a need. The song title is They Will Know Us By Our Love, but I have just entitled that song the song about sisters. So listen to the words of the music and they'll, they'll, they'll sing it with the, with the ukulele and uh, with, with the shaker. Here's the song, Sisters. I'd like for them to sing another song that is one of my favorites that you know when we share the love of Jesus to other people we're actually caring for them not by our own standard of love but God's love agape love unconditional love and there's a lot of people out there that are unlovable not only in the United States but also in the Philippines but we will reach them by the love of Jesus which is unconditional and uh, you know, we, we cannot do this just by our own, with our own might. We have to do this by faith. And you will, you will be surprised what faith can do if we continue to love others and just show our love to, to people around us. You'll be surprised how God could reach down to their hearts and speak to their hearts. And here's a song that Deb and Denise always sings in, in the Philippines. They just learned this last year. I'd like to, for them to, to, to share with you tonight. Th that this song is, is so real that it has touched so many lives in, in the Philippines. And we wanted to share with you tonight a song. It's entitled, That's What Faith Can Do.
The sun will soon be shining You've got to face the clouds To find the silver lining I've seen dreams remove the mountains Hope that doesn't ever end Even when the sky is falling I've seen miracles just happen Silent prayers get Broken hearts become brand new That's what faith can do It doesn't matter what you pray Impossible is not a word It's just a reason A reason not to try Everybody's scared today When you decide to take Step out on the water, it'll be alright. Life is so much more than what your eyes are seeing. You will find your way if you keep believing. I've seen dreams that move the mountains, hope that dies in Broken hearts become brand new That's what faith can do I've seen dreams remove the mountains Hope that doesn't ever end Even when the sky is falling I've seen miracles just happen Silent prayers get answered Broken hearts become brand new That's what faith can do Praise God You know, um, whatever we do by faith God is pleased And when God is pleased We see, re we see results that we have never seen before And the, the chorus says I've seen dreams that move the mountains. We, we can see miracles right in front of us taking place if we live by faith. And you know, whether or not you're, you're in the Philippines or in the United States, we all have to still live by faith, amen? We all still have to continue growing our Christian, uh, Christian faith and, and dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ wherever we are. <laughs> and uh, showing God's, showing His love to the people around us Got a short story to tell while Debbie is tuning uh, the guitar. By the way, this guitar was, uh, 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 we borrowed this guitar from our uh, church in, in Indiana. It's a nice pink guitar there. And I don't think I can play it you know, with a pink guitar. But uh, the girls have just learned the ukulele and, and the guitar since last year. And we have just been surprised by how God is using both of them in ministering to people's hearts, uh, you know, with, with their age. We're, we're so thankful that they're part, in fact, a, a very significant part of our ministry in the Philippines and you know I, I get to uh, before when they were small I get to preach and sing at the same time but now I can kind of rest a bit and let the girls take over and uh, we have a church that we started six years ago Hillcrest Family Life and I'll show you pictures later that the church that we are in is a small apartment but the neighbor right beside us came to me two years ago in 2012 and said that I've heard that uh, your, your, your apartment will be demolished and the owner will be building a three-story building. And I said, yes, that, yes ma'am, that's true. And she said, well, where is the church going to be after the building is built? Well, I said, it's going to be on the second floor because the owner wants the first floor, the ground floor, to be business. So it will be on the second floor. And she said, so you're going to be renting again for the next five years or so. I said, yeah, because I, I don't have any money to buy uh, a lot and build a building. And she said this immediately. She said, well, I want to build you a building. She's a neighbor. She, she's not a member of the church. And she said, I want to build you a building, and I want you to design it, whatever you like. I said, where's the building going to be built at? 
she's a next door neighbor and right behind her is a 4,000 square foot of lot of just fruit trees so it's just around the corner from where we were where we are and I said well, what's gonna be the deal well she said well after the building is built you will rent it for five years and in the five years I'm gonna divide however much I spent for it so I can get my money back after five years and after five years you have an option to buy the property and the building I said that is a good deal and we signed some papers pastor we signed a contract and right now as I stand here it's 70 percent done here in, in two or three months it's gonna be done we're so excited that she is just a neighbor she is not a member and you'll you'll be surprised with this she is even an atheist two weeks ago when we left the Philippines to fly over to the United States we had spoken to each other and I, I said we're, we'll be gone for about two and a half months and and I said I can I offer a prayer for you I just want to pray for you and the building that we're building and you know politely she said yes of course yeah, but she didn't close her eyes she, she just uh, uh, prayed with me uh, you know with respect but then she she still never believed but let me tell you this when when I was designing the baptismal pool it, it was something like this and I was trying to tell her and her engineer how it would look like to, to here and uh, I'm gonna put people down on the water and then pull them up and and she's she's kept questioning and asking why I need to do that and she said don't you just sprinkle people with water? And I said, no, no, not Baptist. You know, we, we really dump people under the water. <laughs> Make sure they're under the water. And she said, where in the Bible can you find that? Was Jesus baptized? So everything was explained to her, and I was trying to explain. And, and I said, at the end, her name is Marissa. I said, Marissa, don't worry, because after this bu building's built and the baptismal pool is done, I'm going to baptize you right here. <laughs> and she just you know, uh, didn't, 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 didn't uh, react to anything and, and it just no questions after that. Because I know that God is moving in her heart for salvation. And if the church will be built in about two months, and we'll, we're just right uh, behind their house, she will be hearing the message every single day. And I won't, uh, I won't be surprised that after a few weeks or months, she will be attending church there. And you know what? That's what the love of God can do. When we show the love of God to other people, God's love will reach down to where they are. And they will feel it, and they can't do anything about it but to respond to it. There's a beautiful song about God's love. Listen to the words.
that's that's going to be the building after it's after it's done and we named it future generations because we believe that we will not last a long time but this building will be made for future generations like uh, these girls and that building it will be uh, it's ready for four floors but she's going to pay only for the first floor and lord willing in two years we're, we'll be uh, raising some funds to be able to uh, build another floor and this is what god's love can do it can touch hearts of people that you will never imagine will come to jesus in, in this way when we had the groundbreaking ceremonies last year i invited her to church and she shared a testimony on why she offered to build a building for the church and with tears in her eyes she said i have never seen an organization be so active in the community from sunrise to sunset you see for six years the church that we started uh, has been giving free coffee every single day from 6 a.m to about 8 or 9 in the morning every single day and we set up chairs and tables outside we have nice music and newspapers around and we invite people to come and joggers and just people who are walking by. We are situated in Quezon City. Quezon City is now the main capital of the Philippines. Quezon City is where the State University of the Philippines is, where we are located within the university village. So you know there's a lot of people on, on, on the, on, in the road. And so that's how I meet with neighbors and talk with them every single day. And at 8 o'clock, we open a small room with uh, eight computers we put together eight computers and what we do is we offer it for students you see in the Philippines unlike in the United States students have to rent out a computer to be able to go online and you know it's about a dollar for 15 or 20 minutes but in church it's all free even printing is free so that they come to church every day students that go to school in the afternoon come to church in the morning and it's students who go to, the, to school in the morning come to church in the afternoon. And we only have eight computers so that the students who are lined up outside, we, we made a deal with them to say that while you're waiting, would you mind if we teach you the Word of God, the Bible? And they like it because we made a curriculum every day. And we've been doing this for, for over five years now, almost six. And on Mondays, they memorize scripture. On Tuesday, we play the Bible drill game on Wednesday, we do the Bible quiz. Thursday, we uh, study book by book. Friday, they, uh, they, uh, they uh, hear the Bible, different Bible stories. And Saturday, we go through the statement of faith. And on Sunday, we do the regular Sunday school. So it happens every single day, all day. And you, you would see students who would flock into church to study the Word of God. And we've got decisions every single day by students, high school, elementary, and even college. At 5 o'clock, when we close the computer room, the study room, we set up chairs and tables outside for worship service every single night. And this is what we do every single night at 7 o'clock, to eight o'clock, an hour of preaching and singing by the roadside, and we set up chairs and chairs outside. No, none of our neighbors complain because they're all part of the church. So they love what we're doing every single night. But I don't preach every night. I have 10 men who've, who've uh, answered the call to preach. They're not trained in Bible school, but they're preachers every single night. I preach on Sunday mornings, but they preach every single night. And at the end of the day, myself and Christine, my wife, will be tired that night. Our spirits will be rejoicing, knowing that we have led several to the Lord that day and more tomorrow. And that happens every single day. So when Pastor Tell told you that you preach and people will listen, that is literally true, Pastor. And Mr. Brian Palmer, Palmer was there the very first service we had in April of 2008. He was there. We had about 23 come to church that morning, and one of them was Mr. Palmer. And he saw how the church grew every single night preaching the Word of God every day. That church has given birth to two new churches now. The church that we have given birth to celebrated one year last month. And the, 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 the second church that we have given birth to, we just opened about six weeks ago. It's exciting ministry when, when you have people come to church because we know that really the church is the people 
Not the building, no matter how beautiful the building is, it is not the building, but the people. People who experience life change from the inside out. People who experience the work of the Holy Spirit in and through their lives. People who would not just sit on the pews, but be active and proactive as a Christian every single day. And tonight we're going to sing two more songs, but before we sing that, let me share to you a, a portion of the scripture where this concept of church that we have started in the Philippines started uh, where I got that concept from in the Word of God. You see, when we started the church six years ago, we just thought we are in a university situation with a lot of people all over, all day, all night. And the Roman Catholic Church in the Philippines, I don't know here in Monroe, but in the Philippines, the Roman Catholic Church have mass every day. They have services every day. The church is open every day. And that's a cultural thing in the Philippines. So I'd say, why can't we do service every night and just leave the, door, uh, the, the, the church doors wide open for people to come in every single day? And what's good with that is this, that I found a biblical basis for church seven days a week. And it's in the book of Acts, chapter 2. And I'd like you to, to invite you to, uh, tonight to open your Bibles in the book of Acts, chapter 2. Just quickly, and then we'll sing, we'll sing two more songs. Acts, chapter 2, tonight. And here's what the Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 2. Let me read to you verses 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And the Bible says, Acts 2, 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. And fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat and, and, and with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Let's bow for prayer. Our Father, we thank you for this beautiful church that you have allowed us to meet 10 years ago. We thank you, God, for using men and women in this church to bless not only this part of the United States, but all throughout the missionaries that they support, including the Tika family in the Philippines, 12,000 miles away. We thank you, God, that we can partner with your children and we can celebrate together the, the things that you can do to do in and through us. And tonight, I pray your name will be praised. Hide me behind your cross in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The verse ends with the, the statement, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. And that really strikes something in my mind, Pastor. I said with this situation and this context, with this culture, it is an opportunity for us not to go with the traditional church that we have known Sundays and Wednesdays, but to go every single day. But my problem is staff. I said, you know, we're just a family of four. At that time, the girls were too small. What do I do? But, you know, when we started loving people and just serving them with free coffee, they just came in one by one and had baptisms here and there, and, and the rest is history. As I look back six years ago, and if I can turn back the hands of time to repeat all over again, I would not change a thing. Because at that time, I don't have any idea, any model that I can think of because none of my family is doing church seven days a week. I mean, you know, my father even asked me one day six years ago, and he said, son, where did you get this idea of church seven days a week? I said, in the Bible. <laughs> I said, I don't have any model today because all my parents never did this. You know, my parents, my uncles, my, my cousins, they never did this, but I saw something. It's an opportunity. We're in the university village. All people are there. I just need to talk to the right people to get permit, and we could do something that's never been done, at least in my lifetime. And it sure is tiring. I'm telling you, it is tiring 
But it's something that you, you will rejoice after you're tired because you see people coming to know the Lord every single day. But when I talk, to, talk about this to our people, I always say that when I mention church, I do not mean the building, but the body of Christ. Because I, told our, I tell our people, the building don't move, but the body moves. Who's that body? You and me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20, the apostle Paul says, what? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, and you've been bought with a price? Therefore, glorify God in your body, which is not your own. It's God's. Therefore, if I think about that and, and, and connect it to church, wherever this body goes, the church goes. Wherever this body is, the church is right there. Because the Holy Spirit is in me, with me, for me, and I can celebrate church wherever I am. That's why when I talk of church seven days a week, I don't talk about the, 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 the building, but the body of Christ. And I always tell our people, on Sundays, we are the church gathered. But from Mondays through Saturdays, we are the church scattered. That God scatters us to be the light in this dark world where we are. I mean, there is no time, especially in the Philippines with that culture of being very sociable and highly relational people. I said, there is not a reason why would we would not do church seven days a week. And so I made an acronym of church, the, the letter C-H-U-R-C-H. Six points. I, I won't be a Baptist tonight of uh, three points. I'm going to preach in six points, but I'm, I'll be there in five minutes here, so we'll sing two more songs. Six points tonight of that word, C-H-U-R-C-H. -H. And, and uh, bro uh, Brother Jason, you don't have to, to fix that. They can, they can memorize this. <laughs> the first word in, in the letter C of church is Christ-centered. Christ-centered. Our lives should be Christ-centered. When you come to church on Sunday, we don't wear a robe that says Christian at the back. And when we get out, we take off that robe and say, see you next Sunday. No, this Christian is not a robe that we wear on church on Sundays. This Christian is what we have, have been put on in us, the Holy Spirit, so that we should have live Christ-centered lives everywhere life takes us. That Jesus Christ would be seen in and through you and me. In the neighborhood, in the school, in, in, at business, at work, at play, in the grocery, at the gasoline station, even when we drive. Amen. You would not like driving in the Philippines. And Miss Margaret has experienced this a lot of times. You sit beside me when I'm driving in the Philippines. You shut off your eyes, close your eyes, and pray. And be assured of your salvation. Because in the Philippines, all the lights, the, the thi we call them things, we don't call them lights. And painting on the, on the ground, those are just decorations to make it beautiful, you know. We, it's just traffic, it's just here and there. That's why I have to discipline myself when I drive in the United States, preacher. I have to drive like you, you know. I have to be disciplined and stay on the lane, you know, and always make signals and everything. But in the Philippines, it's, it's just like that. We, we drive defensively in the Philippines. You see, when, when we, we, you know, what is, the, what is uh, you, you, you have a right on the road. What is that right on the road? We don't know what right it is. Whoever goes, to, uh, goes first has the right. You know, that's the thing. You know, when you're in a traffic situation, whoever can squeeze, squeeze in first, he has the right. And Filipinos know that, you know. But uh, it's so funny that God could test us if we're Christ-centered, if we are... Uh, 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 driving Christ-centered, you know, in, in our driving, if we still do that. Seven days a week, we have to be Christ-centered. Amen? The next letter of, of church will be not only Christ-centered, but letters H, home-focused. Home-focused. Why do we need to focus on the home? Because that's the first, the first organization that God built before governments, before schools, before businesses, before anything else in the world, there was the family, the home. Remember Genesis chapter 2, when God officiated the first wedding of Adam and Eve? 
That's how God puts the home a priority. And you know what Satan have done, has done? He's attacked the home. He's destroyed the home. Not only in the United States, but also in the Philippines. The name of the church we started is Hillcrest Family Life Baptist Church. And six years ago, when we were starting the church, I just thought, we just love the name Family Life. And six years after today, I can see that comparing it to the members that we have going in that church, this family is abnormal because most of the families that we have gotten into the church have been dysfunctional, have been coming from separated uh, uh, husbands and wives and, and dysfunctional children and dysfunctional marriages. But you know what? There is a, a, a solution to that if we become home focused and there it's not too late that's the reason why whenever i speak i preach in any church in the philippines or here in the united states i have also take my family with me so that after i preach i get accountable i am accountable to my kids and my wife if i'm saying the, the you know true real things here or i'm just you know just saying words and telling you stories that are never that never happened i want to be accountable to them first and that's the reason why we're home, we're becoming home focused. As church, you and I have to be home focused. Prioritize our family, especially when it, when it calls for you to becoming a dad or a mom, a grandfather, a grandmother, or an obedient child. Home focused. The next letter of church will be letter U, which will be unique. So I've given you Christ-centered. What's the next one? You've been listening. Home focused and unique. I don't. I, I. I. won't spend too much on this third word because the church is is definitely, absolutely unique. Why? Because Jesus Christ didn't die for any government. Jesus Christ didn't die for any school or any any business. No, Jesus Christ died for the church. He died for you and for me, and that's what makes us unique. And the best thing about it is that Jesus Christ will come again. He himself will come again and receive us to himself so that where he is, there we may be also. Praise God that he will not take governments, even how, how successful a government is, a business, no matter how much a, a billionaire the owner is, but he will take the church, you and me, and that's what makes us unique. Don't think you're insignificant. Because God loves you, gave everything for you, even his own son. Next letter for the word church is letter R, and that stands for relational. In the very first verse in the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, says, can we all recite it? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You know, if it ended with, with the words, in the beginning, God, you know, God would still be God. If he forgot or didn't mind at all creating you and me or the world, he would still be God. He does not need you and me to be God. But that next word to God, created, is a relational word. He took the risk of creating man. He took the, the danger of creating you and me. Why? Because he's a relational God. As a relational God, we also have to be relational beings seven days a week. The next letter for church is letter C, and that stands for community. Let me give you a review here, a quick review. What does the first word C stand for? Christ-centered, H, U, R, we are wonderful. Letter C would be community. And that community comes from three words. Common, communion, communication. And that's what makes neighbors differ from a community. A neighborhood, you probably don't know your neighbor, but in a community setting like Lakeside Missionary Baptist Church, you have pastor calling on you, you have people praying for you, and what a great thought that we have the church to bear our, the burdens that we have with us, amen? What a great thought that we know that we are being prayed for, cared for. What, what a great thought that we are, we are being helped and lent a hand. 
We don't have time to go through Acts chapter 2, but if you can read that tonight, it will be great. Especially that part in verses 44 and 45, when they sold everything and gave to all who are in need. That's, that's great revival happening right there. Because they taught, thought to themselves that nobody owned their own possession, but they gave to everybody who has a need. We are a community as a church. And finally, letter H would stand for with a heart. So it will be Christ-centered, home-focused, unique, relational community with a heart. And that's what makes the difference. If we do things sincerely from our heart. If we do it not, not just because we're forced to do it or not just because we're told to do it, but because we want to do it for God. And if you want to do it for the Lord, God will return to you the blessings that you've never seen before. And we were just talking, uh, Christine and myself, while we were driving up here yesterday to Monroe. And, and those are good times for us to talk, you know, while the girls are asleep. And, and I just asked her a question, you know, and she would ask me some things like that and this. And, you know, it, it would come into your mind that what if you did not answer the call to become a preacher, a missionary? And I told her, I said, I, I could have been the coach of Miami Heat, you know. I'm with San Antonio Spurs, by the way. But the coach of Miami Heat is Filipino. And a lot of people would say that he, he looks like me. No, I say, no, no, I don't look like him. He looks like me. Yeah, looks like me. Name is Eric Spolstra. And he's Filipino. His mother is Filipino. He's been to the Philippines last year. But, you know, I never regret the fact that we have answered the call to do what we're doing. And my dad could be proud of me and my brother that we're doing what we're doing today. But you know what? It's a call from God. That if God calls you, you only have one life to answer to that call, to respond to that call. And I may be talking to a teenager. I may be talking to a mom, a dad, a, a young adult. I may be talking to a grandmother or grandfather this morning, this afternoon. I'd like to tell you this thing before we sing our final song. It is not too late. You could do, still do something for God. And he doesn't need a lot of people to do it. He just needs a few people that will be surrendered to say, I'm going to be the church God wants me to be. Not only in church, but most especially outside the church. You know, the Tika family are, are, are here this, this, this evening, and I don't know when we will be able to come back again. But one thing is for sure. Lakeside and Pastor Larry and all you folks, we remember the names. We always pray for you. And know that whenever God takes us to heaven, you will see Filipinos like us coming up to you and saying, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Continue to do the good work that God has started in your heart, no matter how big the sacrifice, no matter how big the, the temptation of, of, of leaving it and then just walking out, but saying, God, I want to be the church that you wanted me to be. And the chapter ends with the Lord added to the church daily. That just excites me because after the apostles did what they're supposed to do, at the end, the Lord added to the church. After you've done what you're supposed to do, what I'm supposed to do, God will add on to whatever we've left behind. God will add on the blessings to you and to me and to the legacy that we will be leaving with our children and our children's children, and so on and so forth. I'm going to call Christine. Uh, we're going to sing a, a song. Uh, it's uh, close to our hearts. Uh, I just felt in singing. We, we've never, we, we've, uh, we've sung this for, um, um, the last time we sang, sang we, we don't usually sing this song, but last time we sang this song was also this morning, but then we, we don't sing it as much. I just felt like, like singing it tonight. And I don't think she even knows what we're, we're, what we're about to sing, The Lighthouse. Okay. <laughs> That's what I like with, with Christine. You know, when I'm in the pulpit, she, she obeys whatever I say. After I'm in the pulpit, I obey whatever she has to say. <laughs> the song, The Lighthouse, 
is just a song that, that is close to our hearts because if you, if you think about it, if it weren't for that lighthouse, where would we be? There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, it sends out light that I might see. Safely lead me home. If it wasn't for that old lighthouse, Praise God. If it weren't for that old lighthouse, Jesus Christ, you ask yourself, where would we be? We'll be still in our sins. And thank God, God has given us the, the honor, the privilege to become children of God, even to them that believe on his name. So that as children of God, we have to live responsibly to become church wherever we are. Tonight, as we close in prayer, and Pastor Larry leads us in closing prayer, think that he is sending us to be churches wherever we are throughout the week until we meet again. The girls have, have made flower crowns. Is that what you call these things? Flower crowns. And uh, these are not for sale, but they wanted to help with the children's ministry that we have. We feed children there three times a week on Saturday and Sunday, and we, uh, we 
give them baths, the street children. Christina started a ministry on the hygiene ministry that we give baths to street children because, you know, very expensive for toiletries in the Philippines. And also that uh, they, they uh, help in, in uh, uh, medical missions and everything. So all the children's ministry that they do. And Debbie and Denise has just thought, thought of these things to be part of, the, of this ministry. And these are not for sale. And they have, they're just asking a donation of $7.00. Per, per flower crown. Flower crown, you call this flower crown, right? Not the thorn of, a crown of thorns, but uh, the flower crown. Uh, any am amount that will come to, to these, uh, go to these uh, flower crowns will go to help their, their children's ministry. And, and Deb and Denise has just done a phenomenal job with our children there, there in the Philippines. We'd like to sing our final song tonight. And as we sing this, please, after the service, spend time in our table to, to look at all the pictures that we have going seven days a week, Christine's scrapbooking and all the preachers there and take a card so that you always remember the Tika family in prayer. We'd like to sing this song till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Beneath his wings securely hide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet. Till you. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> what a blessing. What a precious, sweet spirit God's allowed us to experience this evening. May I encourage you to stop by their table, visit with them, find out more about what they're doing. Thank you for what you've given tonight uh, to expand this ministry. And uh, I don't know how to go about this. I, I'm gonna take this precious family. Uh, anybody's welcome to go. We're gonna go down to Cracker Barrel after church and, and uh, have a dinner together. But as a church, every time they come to the area and we're privileged to have them, we help them financially, uh, but I'd like to see us as a church to accept a responsibility to do that on a monthly basis. So I want you to pray for that, to that end. And if we have that desire in our heart, God will, God will provide for us to be able to pro provide for them. Let's bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege that we have again to worship together. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in the life of this precious family. And as the days approach, that building is completed. I pray for that dear woman that's making that possible. Surely, some way, somehow, you're working in her life. 
And I pray as the gospel reaches her heart that she might be one of the first that come to faith in Jesus Christ for the efforts. Not that she can buy her way in, but Lord, somehow you've moved in her life and, and, and I'm sure that you're speaking to her heart. Thank you for this family. May your blessings rest upon them. May you give them safe journey as they travel throughout the country in the next few months. And we pray for the time that we can meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. I talked to Ruel uh, before service. They're here until August, and so at dinner tonight, I'm going to try to figure out a way to get them back before they leave. And I've also, his father's and mother's also here, and so we'll try to figure out a time to get them to come and be with us also. Let's stand. God bless you. Appreciate you being here. Stop by the table on your way out.